The world is a circle without a beginning And nobody knows where it really ends oh, Everything depends on where you are in the circle without a beginning Nobody knows where the circle ends I always go overboard and talk about other subjects instead. The important one I wanted to tell you is that to practice any other method is so difficult, difficult, difficult. And takes a lot, a lot of time, not like the Quaning method. The Quaning method is the only one that gives direct enlightenment, immediate enlightenment and direct contact with heaven, masters and Buddhas in different lands to help you, to lift you up and guide you home. I'm working with all of them, yes? Sometimes the Buddhas are also using my uh, physical being in order to spread out more blessings to the world. So sometimes if you have good uh, spiritual attainments, you can see Buddhas fly out from my physical being. In the inner world, in inside of your wisdom center, yeah, you see that. Not because I have a lot of Buddhas. It's just because we work together and the Buddhas can use one temple for many Buddhas. Yes? But uh, not all the Buddhas were born with such grand welcoming by so many Buddhas, saints and sages and all others. We have never read such events like that anywhere in the scriptures about other Buddhas, saints and sages' birth. So this body temple is very precious. We need it for this specific time of imminent great upheaval and great change. That's why when this body was born, many, many Buddhas came, as many as possible, within the two days' uh, uh, permission period. When a body comes down to become a future Buddha, you have to have a lot of rules to follow. You can't just have visitors any time, especially when you're first born. But the most purity of that time is when you're first born. It's easier for all the Buddhas to come and impart some part of their Buddha's essence into that physical baby body being mm. so that in the future, when that baby grows up, he, she can have much more power than just one Buddha alone because some of the Buddha's essence are still left in this body when this body was still a baby. Otherwise, one Buddha cannot do much, can do but too busy, you know, and exhausted. So many Buddhas help together. They say many hands make light work. It's like that. But still, this body has to suffer a lot. Not just the body, also mental, emotional, you know, psychological, all kinds of things. So many Buddhas still can't deal with this, oh, dark world that's controlled and ruled by Maya, by the illusional power. That is the problem, yes? I want to tell you that even to practice as a normal Panin practitioner, you don't go through a lot of hardship like many other methods. I will tell you soon what kind and how. You just meditate two and a half hours a day. You don't even have to do anything. If you went out and helped with advising people about the vegan diet to make them rethink their life about killing others or the indirect killing to eat other beings, then it is your choice, your voluntary choice. I don't ask you to do anything. I might say so, say, okay, let's go out and, and help people. It's from love, from feeling sorrowful for them. Because if we don't help them now, if they die, that's it, they never have a chance again. This time, this period of time, is what they call the end times. Anyone who doesn't practice righteousness will be eliminated from existence for a and a and a and a and of lifetimes. If you could even be a tree or a stone, it's already very lucky. No, you're not allowed to be anything. You just become like exiled, terminated. Life is taken away from you. Until E and A and ends later, maybe you can uh, gain the chance again. But this is something that is so abstract, so we don't need to talk about that too much right now. It's just a different period of our Earth. 
the law became like that, too strict, because we make a bloodbath out of our life, out of this planet. So heaven can't bear no more. It's too much debt to clean, so they just want to destroy it all and make it new. So if you are lucky and you practice spiritually, you will be, you know, there when the renewal comes. Please hurry, okay? I can help you in many ways. Just be vegan, be repentant. Thank God, thank all the masters. That's all you need to do. Thank them, appreciate them. Ask them for forgiveness. Be vegan, repentant. Praise God and the masters, yeah? Ask for forgiveness, that's all. It's not difficult. I don't ask you for money or support or anything at all. All the people who work for Supreme Master TV are volunteers, the happy volunteers. They're honored to do it because they don't have a lot of chances anyway. They can do it once or a couple of times. We have to give a chance to other people who are capable to be hosts on our Supreme Master TV. Yeah? It's not like everybody who applies can be a host or on the working team even. We have to see the quality also. And sometimes when we don't have enough pure people, then we have to use some next to pure ones. But not bad, not liars, you know, not boasting like they are Buddha or the like Guru Chi when they are nothing. They just zealous ghosts, demons or low level, maximum low level, that's it. That's why the ego comes up. When the ego is very high, that means the level is very low. Yes. When heaven did not tell you to be a master, and you come out and announce it yourself, just for your fame and gain, and then even misuse the power to harm others, molest girls and boys, some so-called guru chi is a bisexual. You know whom I'm talking about. He asked for why, and then molest nuns, molest boys, monks even. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. That rumor, yeah. Guruji, even, my God, who bestowed him that title. He must be demons who deluded him. But he himself is a demon, so there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> there was a funny joke. I forgot the name of it. He was a, a clairvoyant, you know. I think uh, Japanese, also famous. I just forgot his name. He could predict things, he could see through people, he could read people's minds and all that. He could see their future and he could smell death, as was supposed to be. So if somebody was dying, you know, he could smell it already before they die. Other people can also, not just him, but there's not a lot of people who can do that. So he was always accurate. If some patient came and begged him to tell whether or not He's going to leave. You say he smells death already. Then that person was not going to leave. He was always accurate. He often told people, sometimes voluntarily, so that they could prepare or they could do something. Maybe they could change their death sentence. When he went into a bookshop, he was queuing to buy a book and he smelled death. So he told the man in the same queue, you know, I smell death on you. It's better you go home now and go to the doctor. Maybe you can cure yourself and get some medicine or something. He keeps saying that, and the man listened and said, Oh, never mind. No, no, it's okay. He insisted he still stay there doing his <laughs> things. And normally, this clairvoyant didn't want to tell strangers like that on the street, but he was just next to him. He feel pity, so he told him. He told him again. And then the man still didn't want to go anywhere. He just said, no, it's okay, I stay here. It's nothing, don't worry. And lastly, that clairvoyant told him, I normally don't do this to strangers, but please, I feel sorry for you. Please go home, go to the doctor quickly. Don't stay here, you might die. So <laughs> that was the last time, and the man looked into his eyes and said, don't worry, I'm already dead, so nothing can happen. <laughs> He was a dead person. He was talking to a ghost. <laughs> Imagine that. But because he can see ghosts, he can see invisible beings, some ghosts can manifest themselves 
into human beings. And many humans on this planet are also a manifestation of ghosts or demons, or no, possessed by ghosts and demons. Anyway, I told you already before, the 40-something percent. And also some from outside of our world as well, yes? They're not always humans from this planet, yes? Okay? Right. <laughs> I think it was very funny the, the man answered him, I'm dead already, don't worry. <laughs> well, finally, he had to tell the truth because otherwise the clairvoyant would be pressing him to go home, you know, <laughs> to see a doctor. So finally, he had to say, Leave me alone, I'm dead already, don't worry. <laughs> the world is a circle without a beginning, and nobody knows where it really ends. Depends on where you are in the circle without a beginning. Nobody knows where the circle ends. La la. <laughs>